maybe Detroit was uh, economically depressed, but musically rich than a motherfucker. Collaboration is a thing that comes naturally here in Detroit. Because we've been failed time and time and time again by government, because we've been failed by systems, we've learned to naturally depend on community. We know each other because we're of this place. The country was in an economic recession. AIDS was devastating communities. Auto industry had gone to hell. Around that time, Detroit got dubbed the murder capital of the country. And yet, that's when the birth of techno came about. Young people took control over their futures and rewrote the future in terms of saying that, look, we see something better. We had no idea that those rhythms that would go inside of these drum machines would not just change our lives, but it would change music history. A lot of people, and I would include myself in that, didn't know. We didn't know who made this music. This is the voice of you This is the voice of you I've always enjoyed it, the fights, the shows, you know, doing some futuristic, progressive shit. And in some instances, being a role model, I guess. Everyone's held accountable for what they're offering, music-wise or art-wise, to match a certain quality. And everyone wants to meet that standard. What I'm doing and what I'm working on is becoming like bigger than me. What is the future with our young people? With a bunch of old motherfuckers? You out the way, man. Being a futurist, I like to build potential. Back in here. You know, I don't believe in buying all them crazy ass cars and rich folks houses when it's stuff that you obviously got to do. This in here is I'm hoping to be a extension of a somewhere in Detroit record store. But I want to carry a little bit more selection of Detroit in this store. But all independent. Everything had to be independent. My arch enemy, major record company, and they need for greed, they kill culture, man. The whole history of recorded music is about people not getting compensated for their work. Motown, the largest independent record label in music history, changed the entire way the music industry functions. When you come from a city that has that as part of its legacy, it makes a lot of other things seem possible. L.A. was saying 24-track masters to Detroit, Chicago, Philly. Got a bunch of good musicians there, but they session fee is low. They put the shit on, then they mail it back to L.A. You never get the credit for it, and the people singing on it certainly don't get the credit. That's what kind of bent us off of the shit. That whole thing was fake. A lot of it's fake. A lot of what y'all listening to now is fake. Overproduced, no kind of real grit in it. For us, the underground was not fake. It was real, you know. started in this business with Dilla and Batin and T3 and QD. So there's five of us. Two of them folks are dead. So I started to think really early on about longevity. How do we develop conversations that were bigger than us? I just wanted to have my independence. I didn't know that that was a Detroit story at the time. Later on, I came to see 
that it was because I met Mike and his sister. Back in the 90s, it was booming, booming, booming. Everybody was making records. I started off as the international affairs coordinator, which was a different way of saying I contacted people overseas that owed him money. And then I became the shipper. I still do it. Submerge really came about as a way for people to maintain ownership over what you create and to profit from those things that you create. It's about autonomy, specifically within the black community. It's about ownership. It's about leadership. It's actually about the music. I think what Submerge stands for is uh, adaptiveness. We feel the need, did it well, everybody Copy what we did, now it's tougher. Just like with the records, you put the techno records out, two years later, you're competing against yourself. Instead of complaining, oh yeah, them guys in Europe, they stole my music, they did, well, motherfucker, make up some new shit. If they in 1992, leave them in 1992. Sometimes you will go too far forward and can't nobody catch up. Like with Drexel, it was four, five years before anybody figured out what had happened but I knew the shit was bad as hell. So you just leave it there like a landmine. Just leave it there. Somebody will step on it sooner or later. What tends to happen is the history gets changed to suit whomever's purpose it might be at the time. As an African-American artist, usually we get X out of shit we invent. I didn't know that later that Detroit was maybe the only place playing this kind of stuff, which really shocked me, because I thought everywhere was on it. When I saw the impact that the electronic music from Detroit was having in Europe, I knew I had to build a museum. I mean, if Lil Richard and Howlin' Wolf and all them could have built a museum, they would have did it too. Michael's like, we need to preserve this. So we just start putting all the stuff together. It's no lies, it's easy to remember because it's the truth. It's what we did with, you know, no money from anybody. We did it ourselves. go to Submerge and you go to Exhibit 3000, and they get a chance to see key cornerstone figures in what we call techno music. It's a consistent opportunity for young people who are from Detroit to appreciate something that is actually theirs. Detroit techno history is alive. The originators of this music are here now. It's important to pass that tradition onto the next generation of young Detroit musicians so that this legacy is carried on. Just don't fuck with the history. Have your party, but don't try to fuck with history this time, because you are as there. Cornelius and Wajid were on a tour of the building. We have shared interests in sharing this music with the young people of Detroit. And so we came back to this space and started brainstorming this project. Right now, for the kids to get their hands on any kind of current gear, Detroit kids, they had to drive out to the suburbs. And that's, that's full of shit. If it's 30 kids and Everybody get their hands on the drum machine. Four, five of them gonna want to be producers. Representation and demonstration is the spice of life, right? So that's why Underground Music Academy exists. That's why Submerge exists. Whether they decide to be a musician or not is immaterial. That's not the point. It's the exposure and access. When you present something like that, you create a revolution. I'm hoping the building can be a uh, focal point for potential for Detroit residents to come down and 
get involved with the future. That's what I'm hoping for. And of course, the school upstairs, that'll save a lot of souls up there. I would love to see this space continue to do what it did when we cut that ribbon. And that's to inspire. Sure, we will teach people how to use drum machines. Sure, we'll teach people how to DJ. But the real goal is social justice values. Who do you teach on the way? Who do you pull while you get to this space? There are many levels, but it all starts with inspiration. Underground Resistance is a record label. It's a production team. It's also a collective. When you get to submerge, not just being distribution, not just being the shop, but also being a building, a space for mentoring and conversation and all these things too. It's a living and breathing like institution. Distributors and producers and labels, they understand the importance of putting a record here and it's not just to sell the record, but it's to contribute to the archival element of Submerge and Exhibit 3000. The idea of community helped to keep me motivated. It just gave me more like energy to be like, let me go hard with this because I know I got people around me that support it. The core of UR and what it represents for me and the people here is really like a deep love. I know that that's not necessarily when you think of, when you think of bah, 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 like in a weird way, it's kind of like a display of what happens when you have true like interdependence. You would only know if you got to come here and experience that, but it's love. <laughs>